Foundations are made out of concrete or cinder block, which is, after all, a concrete derivative. And structures have to be attached to that foundation. It's long been kind of a trick making that interface between a wood or a steel structure or even a masonry structure and the foundation that supports it. We're going to talk about about a dozen ways to attach other materials to concrete foundations, starting with three connections that are put in place before the concrete is poured. Now, one of the big drivers over the last 50 years in the United States for attaching structures to the foundations more securely has been an increased seismic awareness. Earthquakes happen. Earthquakes cannot be timed, but they are predictable in that you know that sooner or later, if you live in an active seismic zone, you're going to have an earthquake. Now, it's easy as a contractor to sort of bridle and bristle at those codes and their enforcement, particularly when an inspector is enforcing something that you didn't see when you bid the project. But take a deep breath. Think about what's really going on. You're building something that is able to kill people if it falls on them. So let's not resent too profoundly seismic codes, regulations. And if we do, just go back and look at some of the newsreels about what happened in Port-au-Prince when Haiti was shaken so badly. And those masonry and wood structures fell down and killed thousands and thousands of people. So when it's new construction, it's engineered, it's improved by a, a building department, a municipality has signed off on it, an engineer's had a look at it perhaps, and a contractor's building the foundation. It's easy enough to incorporate the connections between the structure and the foundation in the process of building the foundation. I have here three different ways that structures can be tied to, to uh, the foundation. There are many more. These are the three that I had in the shop. This is a standard half inch by 10 inch J bolt, anchor bolt. Typically, these are put on about six foot centers around the perimeter of a, of a uh, house through the mud sill, which is a pressure treated board, and within 12 inches of the end of each of the joints. That holds a mud sill down pretty well, but you can visualize it. You put a washer on here and a nut. If things got really crazy, the wood would tear off of that, okay? They don't cost much to put in. They don't cost much to buy. You can wet set them or you can put them in with a template. They're great. This was the next serious kind of step towards seismic awareness for residential. This is called a, a Simpson fast tie. You may be able to visualize that that would attach to the edge of a wall form, and then the offset puts this hook down into the middle of the wall. A piece of rebar, a longitudinal bar, could be laid on that hook, and you can see that would put a great deal of resistance to draw out in one particular place with nails or structural screws going through these slots into a stud, perhaps a four by four, whatever's called out to get the resistance to uplift. Pretty good. This is the state of the art right now. This is called a stab bolt. You can see there's a line to which it is to be embedded. So this embeds that far into a stem wall. That's a long ways. And then this S shape, means that you've got to straighten out a lot of bend and disrupt a lot of concrete to get that out. There will be a hold down designated HD5s, HD3s, HD7s. It designates a different fabricated or formed bracket that slips over this, nuts on there, fastens to a stud or a trimmer assembly or a king stud trimmer assembly. This holds the whole world down. It's pretty good. Way easier to do this before the concrete is cast and get the, the values that you need to tie the structure down securely. Most of the ways that I'm going to show you to attach to concrete require a rotor hammer, a hammer drill. Rotor hammer is really what it is. It is um, a mechanism, a drill, that combines the rotation of the bit with an intermittent little light hammer blow. It's really light on a cordless hammer drill, but they work great for small diameter holes. I love a Bosch Bulldog. So this is an SDS shank rotor hammer. Rotor ca hammers come much, much bigger with spline shanks. It just goes into the collet, you give it a turn, it's in. Handy. It's light. I can get bits up to 7 eighths of an inch in diameter and down to 8, 1 eighth of an inch in diameter in this. It's perfect for the work that I do. I've worn out one, well, I gave it to my boy. I think he's still getting some good out of it. But it's just right from my perspective. This will drill holes in concrete like nobody's business. Watch this.
What I have here are six permanent, or at least essentially permanent, um, attachment methods. Three of these are wedge anchors. This one is just to demonstrate that they get pretty big. This is a Titan. I'll drill a hole and that'll thread itself in. This is a long lead shield and a lag bolt. This was about the earliest technology for threading a mechanical bolt into a hole in the concrete. I'm going to de demonstrate a couple of these. They work on similar principles where sliding into a hole, they then swell and resist draw out. Now I'm going to put a crescent wrench on there, tighten it up, and as the threads pull the bolt out, it's going to gradually come tight in the concrete, increasing resistance, beginning to embed the washer into the wood just a little bit, compressing the concrete at the bottom of the hole. Nice connection. Attach this this time with two 16 penny nails into a quarter inch hole. You can take two sinkers, start them in a quarter inch hole, and make a very sturdy connection. You can take a quarter inch hole, ream it out, put in a quarter inch dowel, Take a 16 penny duplex nail. A very sturdy connection. You can drop down to a 3 16 bit. Called a grab nail. Take a piece of tie wire. Squish it down nice and tight. Slide it into the hole. Bend it over. And take two eight penny duplex. Start them into the same hole. Make a very sturdy connection. These three connections, the grab nail, the, two, the 16 following a quarter inch oak dowel, and the two 16 penny sinkers, are pretty much just for construction connections related to forming, bracing, that sort of thing. These other wedge anchors can make a permanent and code compliant connection. But what I'm going to show you next is sort of the next generation of the same thing. It's called a Tapcon screw. That's a very hard, slightly abrasive, uh, serrated screw on that, on that shaft. I'm going to drill an eighth inch diameter hole, and then I hope that I can run this Tapcon down into the concrete without breaking it. Look at that. Gone. That's a very nice, very fast connection. <clears throat> now in many cases that can replace the old school thing of driving the nails in. But if you don't have a Tapcon, if you don't want to have to do that 10,000 times on a tilt-up job, but you want to save the money by nailing, it's a wonderful, uh, very slick thing. Let me show you how that comes out. Boom, just like that. So the thing about a Tapcon is the diameter of the hole is critical. You have to have a rotor hammer so that the hole goes in. If you're trying to do this with a regular drill and just friction and a carbide bit, you can do that. You can wear your way in, but it will ream that hole out to where it's too big for the threads on a Tapcon to successfully engage the outside of the hole. Tapcon won't hold for crap. But if you use a, a rotor hammer bit, get the hole in, get it out, don't, don't stay in there long enough to ream the hole out. A Tapcon is just really hard to beat. Including for a homeowner attaching a picture or something to a wall, they're a Cadillac connection. The, the attachment method of steel threads into concrete that has the highest resistance to draw out typically is to epoxy a threaded rod into concrete. You try not to overfill the hole with epoxy or you squish expensive material out onto the slab. The key thing is that you get the inside of the hole clean. You need to drill it, you need to brush it, you need to inject some air, you get it just as clean as you can 
so that it gets a good mechanical bond, as well as a chemical bond actually, between the epoxy sleeve that's formed, the threaded rod, and the inside of the hole that is uh, receiving the epoxy and the threaded rod. Lots of times an engineer will specify that because he feels that he can establish a quantity to the resistance to draw out when it's epoxied in that he cannot depend on with just a wedge anchor or any other mechanical but not uniform connection. So this is the only attachment method that I'm going to show you uh, or at least make a big deal out of that does not require drilling a hole. This is a powder actuated fastening device, dual fast, single shot, doesn't cost much. It's a 22 caliber blank that you can buy in five different loads. That is, they decrease in uh, powder charge from five down to one. I think these are about threes. They're yellows. Let's see how they do with an inch and a half. Maybe that's a two inch, a two inch pin in a three quarter inch board. stand on the board to get it in good tight contact. You put the nail in there without shooting your finger off. You push it into the board and pull the trigger. Now if I want to set that nail, I'll just put another charge in, set down on top of it. Bam! Out of sight. Quick. This is a toggle bolt. It's kind of old school. There are some newer iterations of this idea where you can drill into the cell of a cinder block with a hole that big, slide this folding toggle through that hole until it springs open, and then tighten up the screw, pulling that toggle back against the side of the cell, and get, just get a really, really strong bulletproof connection, holding whatever you want to the block. Works great. For lighter connections, faster, more convenient, these little plastic mollies or plugs. You know, you would drill a quarter inch hole, drive it in, start your screw, run it in, hold pictures, hold lighter items. I would think twice before I trusted my $900 flat screen to one of these. But, so there's a lot of ways. So the message is, don't be afraid to fasten a concrete or cinder block. Just pay attention, do it right. You can make a very good structural connection. Done!